Hey guys, uh, today I'm going to give you a little lesson on your system BIOS, B-I-O-S. That stands for Basic Input Output System. Uh, it's just a computer term that basically means um, it's one of the bottom layers, if you will, of your system. If you think about applications like, uh, you know, Adobe products, Adobe Dreamweaver, or Acrobat, or your favorite video player, that's an application. Um, that's kind of like one of the highest level uh, layers of a computer. If you go below that, uh, another layer, if you will, is your operating system. It's what all your applications run on. If you go even further down, um, you kind of got your BIOS in between the operating system and your hardware. Your hardware is the most basic components of your computer, so it runs everything, obviously. Um, like I said, between the hardware and your operating system is the BIOS. The BIOS basically tells the hardware um, how to operate and how to operate with your specific operating system. Um, uh, it's built into the motherboard. It automatically comes with every computer you have. Um, and you can use it to tweak settings to your system and to your hardware. Um, but again, it's completely separate from your operating system. So it doesn't matter what operating system you run, there's some sort of BIOS. Uh, different BIOS are different with each manufacturer. Uh, they all kind of have a similar layout and look to a to a point, um, uh, but different ones look differently, have different uh, options. Also depends on not only the manufacturer but how old your system is, what options you'll have, um, and you can do different settings in it. Um, and I'll show you some of the settings and different things you can do, and how it operates. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and boot up my computer now. Now your system BIOS is something that you see immediately even before the operating system boots up. It may be a splash screen of some sort or it may just be um, some old fashioned looking computer stuff. Um, but this is what I see in my particular system and if you notice down here it says press delete to enter setup. Press tab to display BIOS post message. And uh, I was pressing delete by the way because on my particular system that's what I have to press to get into the system BIOS to the setup. On different uh, hardware and different computers, it's probably different. Delete is one of the popular ones on systems. Uh, if that doesn't work on yours, it may be F12, uh, maybe F10 or F2. Those are some other popular ones. Um, but just check with your user manual if you have one, or you can just Google it. Uh, just type in your uh, computer model. Um, especially That should work, especially if it's a pre-built model from a manufacturer. Just go to the manufacturer's website even. May have information on there, but again, um, those are some of the popular ones. All right, um, so here's my system setup. I currently have a password set up um, so that you can't get into change the settings in here or boot up to the operating system unless you input this password. And I'll have a video later showing you how to set one of those up. Um, but I'm just going to kind of give you a, a very brief overview of the BIOS and just kind of hit some of the the, the more popular uh, settings that you can change. Let's kind of show you where they are in here. Um, all right. So again, everyone's going to look different depending on the manufacturer and your hardware. But for mine, if you see at the bottom, if, uh, if you can see, uh, it says F1 for help, escape for exit, uh, up and down arrows to select items, right and left arrows to select menus, the minus and plus uh, keys to change values, enter to select submenu, F5 for setup defaults, and F10 to save and exit. And again, different ones will probably have different keys, but they should somewhere display, hopefully, and give you a little help, because 99% uh, of the time you're probably not going to be able to use your mouse, you're going to have to use the keyboard to navigate. Alright, so in mine here is the, the main thing that comes up. Um, you got different uh, settings and different uh, information here, is system time and system date. Uh, you can change it here, um, but you usually don't have to worry about that, because whenever you boot up to your operating system, it usually takes care of it you know, with no problem. And you can change it within your operating system as well. Um, it's just and this and this also shows you some different hardware that you have installed, like currently uh, primary IDE master. Um, IDE is simply a type of interface, the type of connection um, from your motherboard to whatever piece of hardware uses that type of connection. Um, and in this one particularly, it's one of my DVD drives. I don't figure it on here. Uh, SATA, another connection that's newer than IDE, it's faster. Um, um, it's my Western Digital hard drive where my operating system is installed. Here's another one of my, here's my other DVD drive, that's also a SATA connection. Um, if you look down here at the bottom, it's grayed out so I can't go down to it. Um, it shows installed memory or your RAM, and on my system it's 4096 megabytes. 
or that translates to you know about four gigs or four gigabytes of RAM. Um, so it just shows you some basic system information. Press the right arrow key to go to the advanced. Um, it shows you some more things. Uh, popular thing, especially with uh, people who game or just want to get higher performance out of their computer, will often change their CPU settings or uh, central processing unit, also known as just simply the processor. Um, in my particular one, mine's locked down. Um, uh, depending on what kind of processor you have and even depending on the kind of BIOS, you might be able to tweak it. Mine, uh, particularly right now, is uh, locked down, but it still shows me information, shows me CPU type. I have an AMD Phenom, that's the, just the, the brand name of the, the family, that's the type of processor that AMD gives what I have. It's a 9850 quad core processor, um, shows my CPU speed, 2500 uh, megahertz. Uh, or 2.5 gigahertz, and probably more commonly called, and the cache of it and things, and different settings depending on your processor. Your processor may or may not have these options. Uh, AMD virtualization. Virtualization just enables you to have a, what's called like a virtual operating system. It's kind of like you have an operating system installed on top of your operating system. And not all, especially older processors, will support that. Uh, most people won't ever have any need for it, but depending on if you have older software that you need to run on an older operating system, you can install a virtual machine and run it on there for different various reasons. Um, but that's an option there. I can turn it on or off. Mine's enabled because I do run some different virtual machines on my computer. And there's just some different uh, AMD and processor kind of specific uh, things I can change there. If I press escape to go back to the other menus. Um, there's some other options here that you can change, but we'll go into those because they're not uh, some of the more popular ones. If I go over to power, I uh, have different settings and options here. If I go to hardware monitor, um, it shows me a list of things that I can have my computer kind of keep track of and keep an eye on. Um, and that's, but again, probably just leave that for default. And if I go back, if I go to boot, here's another probably uh, more popular thing to change. Uh, boot device priority. Uh, this will enable you to customize what your hardware, what your BIOS looks for um, in order to, op to boot from. Normally, uh, your computer just boots straight into your operating system. Uh, depending on your settings in here, uh, it can boot to other devices. You can boot to a CD or a DVD if it has uh, files or like an operating system on it or just things that you're able to boot from. You can boot from there. My particular setup, for instance, it checks for a CD-ROM or even DVD first, and if it finds a disk that it can boot up to, it'll boot from that automatically. If it doesn't find that, then it looks for removable devices that could be a USB drive, a flash drive, for instance. And if it doesn't find either of those, then it goes straight to my hard disk, my uh, hard drive where the operating system is installed. And you can change the order of that just by clicking on one of them, hit enter, at least on my particular system. And you can change the order of what you want to be first. Well, let's hit escape here. And if I go back again, and tools, you got different things. Uh, again, this will probably be pretty different depending on what your BIOS is. And the exit menu, where you can exit saving changes or you can exit uh, discarding changes. And I'm just going to go to exit to discard because I really didn't change anything, but I, just to make sure um, that I did, I'm just going to discard. And because it's very important that you know what you're doing when you're going into your BIOS and changing settings. Because if you don't know what you're doing, uh, you could screw it up. Um, so just be careful, be safe, but you know, explore, see what kind of options your hardware has. Um, the BIOS is also uh, good to use if your system is messing up somehow. If you know what you're doing, you can go in and see how your settings are uh, set and change things to kind of fix problems you may be experiencing or whatever. Um, but there you go, that's a basic overview of some of the more kind of popular settings that people change or maybe something that you've kind of heard of and you want to explore more just get in there and look and see what all you have uh, you may find that there are some settings in there that you may need to change alright but that's a basic overview and there you go so I'm going to discard yes quit without saving and now my system will reboot and from there I can go into the BIOS again or go straight to the operating system